The finance minister. Thank you very much, sir, for giving me this opportunity to respond to several members of parliament who have spoken on the finance bill. So the vision of the Honorable Prime Minister, Sri Narendra Modi, has been to establish a simple, efficient, fair and equitous technology-driven taxation regime in this country. So simplification and ease of compliance for the taxpayer has been the primary objective with which in the last 10 years and this year in the third term of, primary, uh, of Prime Minister Modi, the approach to taxation has been to simplify the taxation, reduce the burden on taxpayer, and make sure it is transparent and equitous. So this year also, our approach has been that we bring in greater simplification of tax laws and procedures, and that we enable growth and employment in this country. So the twin approach for getting the taxation regime in this country a lot more simpler and technology driven has been the broad principle based on which the proposals have been laid before this August House. We've actually brought in transformational changes in the tax governance in the last decade. So without drastically increasing taxes and minimizing lit litigation, we have actually helped, I would think, in bringing a simplified taxation regime, greater transparency, ease of compliance, and driven by the trust we have on the taxpayers. So several members have spoken about tax burden on the middle class. I'll, of course, come a bit later to talk and to respond to individual uh, honorable members who have spoken on specific issues, but broadly on this issue of burdening the middle class, several members have uh, spoken, but I would just take some names other names will come when I respond in specific. Uh, Amar Singh Ji, Arun Nehru Ji, Neeraj Maurya Ji, Supriya Sule Ji, Tanuj Punia Ji, Sachidanandam, uh, Honorable Member, and also Honorable Member Avinash Reddy Ji have all spoken about the burden on the middle class, taxes not really uh, being uh, reduced on them, and so on. In general, I want to put forth before you, sir, that the specific items on which I would propose, and I, I believe that middle class stand to benefit. So I will name them, specify them. In 2023, sir, the slabs for personal income tax were significantly liberalized. All taxpayers had reduced tax liability of 37,500 rupees. This government has again revised slabs in the new regime even now in this budget. Certainly this has an impact on the middle class, I would believe. Standard deduction for salaried employees has also been increased from 50,000 to 75,000 in the new regime in this budget. This is, this, in an, uh, this is an effective relief of up to 17,500 for a salaried employee. This again, I would believe, benefits the middle class. So further, deduction on family pension for pensioners is proposed to be enhanced from 15,000 rupees to 30,000 rupees. For salaried employees, Deduction on employers' contribution in case of employees who are in private sector and public sector banks, those who are opting for the new tax regime, has been raised from 10% to 14% in this budget. Again, middle class stands to benefit from this as well. Sir, so in specific, 
in the last two years, substantial relief has been given to the middle class. I may point out a few things, sir, that while most developed countries were increasing personal income taxes during the COVID-19 crisis, Prime Minister Modi's direction to me, and I've said this earlier also in this house, I'd like to repeat now. Prime Minister Modi's direction to me was totally in contrast with what, what was happening in developed countries. No tax on our citizen to meet the COVID expenditure. And I would strongly uh, request the honorable members to look back at what happened between 2020, 21, 22, 23. We have not increased the tax at all, sir. Effective tax on an income of 15 lakh rupees, I'm taking it as an example, effective tax on an income of 15 lakhs was reduced to 10% in 2023 and has been further reduced this year as well. So I want to make this point clear, sir. Again, I would strongly believe this would certainly help the middle class. Again, sir, I would like to remind uh, through you, sir, the uh, August House, that from the days of tax terrorism, when we were accused in 2014, saying do something immediately because tax terrorism is affecting the middle class and small businesses and the rent-seeking approach of a few in the service had really hurt many of the taxpayers. And this uh, was one of the biggest challenges before this government earlier in uh, 2014, again in 2019, when we're trying to bring in the faceless system, we have moved away from those days, sir, because we brought in the faceless system, which is taxpayer friendly, infused confidence in the taxpayer, and any inquiry on the tax could be responded via email or messages. Besides this, sir, Vivadse Vishwas schemes were brought in as a, list, as a result of which periodically, again this time also we've come up with the Vivadse Vishwas, and as a result of which periodically pending litigation and demands have all been sorted out, relief was brought in to a wide range of taxpayers, largely data shows, largely the beneficiaries are MSMEs, individuals, and small companies. I would think this is also the segment which is the middle class segment. So they have found relief because of the Vivad Se Vishwas. So furthermore, small, old, and petty unverified tax demands of 90 lakh taxpayers were totally removed from the records as announced in the interim budget of 2024. In Goshna 2024 interim budget mein hua tha. Magar uska asar abhi dikne lage ki 90 lakh taxpayers ko hum rahat dene ke liye us samay goshna ki 1.1 crore entries isse nikla record se bahar. Isse rahat sub middle class ko milta hai, chote businesses ko milta hai, mein ye zarur kehna chati. Sir, startups ke liye. For startups, sir, the removal of angel tax has come as a big relief. And this was introduced. We have removed it all right. And last year and the year before that, we tried removing the startup world from some of the provisions of the angel tax. And we thought that would address the problem. But if the festering problems really uh, worried the small businesses and the startups in particular, we have totally removed it, abolished it. But when was it brought in? It was brought in in 2012, sir. And from then, they, in spite of having at least two full years in their hand, the UPA government did not remove the startup. Okay, yes, 10 years, but who was the one who called it as exploitative tax? Yes. You called it exploitative tax. The leader of the opposition called it exploitative tax. And when he introduced it, did he, did he not know that it was exploitative? And now, when you demand abolition of it, 
you forget that you brought it in, but you because you now said it is exploitative, the whole world has to accept it. We have worked on it so that the burden or uh, because of the uh, because of these uh, angel tax does not fall on small businesses. But eventually, after having worked on it two years over, we have now removed it. But I would again like to remind, sir, through you, that it was called as an exploitative tax, and we shall remove it, was a claim by the one who brought it in in the first place. <laughs> sir, exemption limit of one lakh for LTCG, capital gains, long-term capital gains, on certain financial assets, such as inclusive, uh, such as those which are shares and bonds, have been given, and it is in this budget raised to 1.25 lakhs, which also, I strongly believe, benefits the middle class. Because small money which is getting invested in shares and stocks and in uh, bonds, for small uh, returns that people would want to have because their investing capacities are not very big, even for them, this budget has given relief in that we've exempted it from any kind of tax, and that one lakh exemption has been enhanced to 1.25. So middle class, which finds that returns from the stock markets are much better than some of the investing, uh, some of the saving schemes, and therefore who have gone there in, in their own wisdom, we have not taxed them, we have only given them exemption and enhanced exemption, 1 lakh to 1.25 lakh exemption, certainly aiming at the middle class, sir. Therefore, the narrative which is now being said, oh, the middle class, you put them to difficulty, you have not done anything, they are angry with you, certainly, sir, I want the parties who are talking about middle class now to understand this country had 98% taxation. In one of the earlier regimes, the ancient regimes, which also cared nothing for the fundamental rights of the citizens, the regime which brought in emergency, 98% tax. At that time, no middle class worry. No middle class worry. Sir. Only black money. And, and for the number of corruption that had happened between 2000, uh, 4 and 14, sir, public of India would have been much better if those monies were in the coffers rather than in the pocket of a few dynastic leaders. <laughs> sir, indirect taxes. On the custom side, sir, on the custom side, we have taken several steps to facilitate international trade, ensure processes becoming simpler and faster and also to lead to lower logistics cost and compliance cost. And this would certainly boost the domestic production and enhance export competitiveness. So when we brought down the customs duty on several of those items listed in this budget, it was aimed at reducing the prices of raw materials and inputs, making domestic production far, far more cost effective. So to promote trade and employment, sir, we have in this finance bill proposed rate cuts on certain inputs for labor-intensive industries, such as leather and textile sectors, that will boost job creation and address duty inversion um, issues which are prevalent in the textile sector. Exemptions and reductions, sir, on 27 critical minerals. I know Honorable Member Supriya Sule has raised a question on it. I'll certainly come to answer specifically on that issue. But exemption and reduction on 27 critical minerals, such as lithium, cobalt, and many others, which are necessary for this country's strategic autonomy. Duty rate cuts on precious metals, gold and silver, because India is one of the largest hub for cutting and polishing diamonds, and it creates jobs in big numbers. So, and also the gems and jewelry uh, mark a very big export potential for this country. Therefore, we have brought down uh, the duty rates here so that domestic value addition work can be better uh, carried out for export purposes. Sir, duty rate cuts have also been done 
on certain inputs for the aqua farming area and the marine industry so that we'll be able to export more marine products, especially for shrimp. So this is because the industry has been requesting the government, the raw materials which are being imported are critical for maintaining high standards of exports. So although domestic capacity is in the initial stages, I know some of the members of parliament have met me about capacity existing within this country, and at this stage, do we want to reduce the duties? We have certainly supported the manufacturing happening in the country, but till such a time, we didn't want, till such a time that they reach a level, we didn't want marine exports to suffer, and therefore some duty cuts have been brought in there as well. Uh, over and above all this, I have also announced that there will be a comprehensive review of the rate structure over the next six months, and hopefully, at the end of that exercise, we'll have a greater simplified uh, tax structure for our country as a whole. So this is about the indirect tax, customs duties, excise, and so on. Direct tax, I'll come over, sir. Again, technology-backed tax governance is what we are underlining. If uh, income tax assessee goes to his portal to see and to file, I would like to highlight four major steps that have come for the taxpayer's convenience. Pre-filled income tax returns based on verified third-party information have made income reporting faster and easier. Many taxpayers themselves have said this pre-filled form actually is helpful for us. We can reject that which is wrong, but some things which we have forgotten are getting captured and therefore the whole process is simple and easy and helpful. Second, sir, faceless regime. The faceless regime of assessment and appeals has automated major IT-related processes and reduced human interface and rent seeking. There's no discretion because it's now faceless. Third, refunds are issued within days as opposed to months. And that it used to take sometimes several months. Today, average processing time of returns has reduced from 93 days in 2013-14 to 10 days in 23-24. 93 days for refund now gets done within 10 days. A record number of filings, sir, on that a record number of 7.28 crores of income tax returns for the year 24-25 were filed till 31st July 2024. A 7.5% increase from 6.77 crores the last year, 23-24. About 58.57 lakh ITRs and this is a good news, which I would want honorable members to recognize. 58.57 lakh income tax returns were received from first time income tax filers. First time they are filing, 58.57 lakh people have uh, filed, indicating a widening of the tax base for which a lot of effort to nudge people has been taken up by us. Sir, litigation management is also something on which we've given a lot of attention. We've made multiple announcements in this budget. I'd like to highlight some of them. Reopening and reassessment of taxes has been simplified. This is a very, very big issue because many people, many taxpayers felt, for how long should I keep this record? For how long should I remain in suspense? Till when will the income tax authorities keep asking me for documents? We have simplified that process. I want to highlight that assessment may be opened up to only five years post-assessment. But for the fourth and the fifth year, only if unreported income exceeds 50 lakhs. So it will be opened only up to five years after the assessment of that particular year is completed. But even afterwards, what is important is the fourth and the fifth year, you will open it up only if there's been unreported income of 50 lakhs or more. 
the period thus stands reduced from 10 years to five years only. Till now, all of us kept our documents for 10 years. Now it will be reduced to only five years, and I will be grateful to this member, all these members of this house, for me bringing in that change, which will make it much more simpler for all of us, for all of us, literally. In such cases, sir, scheme of block assessment has been introduced for a block of previous six years and the year of the search. So for period of assessment in search cases, search happens by income tax. After that, what? How long do I? For that, in search cases, the period of assessment now stands reduced from 10 years to only six years, even if there was a search not beyond six years. Sir, and in this budget, again, in order to relieve taxpayers of the pain of pendency, we have again brought in a Vivatse Vishwa scheme for the settlement of all pending appeals. It is also proposed that the two regimes of taxation of charities will be merged gradually to be one. Also, monetary limit for filing appeals related to direct taxes, excise, and service tax in tax tribunals or in high court or in the Supreme Court has been enhanced to 60 lakh. Earlier it was 50 lakh. Two, two crores for high courts. Earlier it was one crore. And five crores in Supreme Court. Earlier it was two crores, respectively. This will reduce litigation again and promote ease of doing business. So there's no hurry uh, for small cases going into uh, appeal. That has been clearly laid out that unless the amount is this much, you will not even go on appeal. As a consequence, sir, of the proposed upward revision of monetary limits in finance bill, uh, this is a very important data. I would like to place it before the Honorable House. As a consequence of this proposed upward revision, of monetary limits in the Finance Bill of 24, a total of 7,754 appeals, that is 1,044 appeals pertaining to indirect taxation and 6,710 pertaining to direct tax, are likely to be withdrawn from various judicial fora. 7,754 uh, appeals will be withdrawn. You can understand the impact that it can make on taxpayers, the relief that it will give them, so that there are no appeal after appeal going into the courts. Whether it is the Supreme Court, High Court, or SESTAT, or ITAT, all of them will be removed. So the rationalization of TDS rates, we have proposed in this budget to reduce TDS rates from 5% to 2%, no different, different uh, rates, and to eliminate the section 194F, where TDS rate is 20%. So even that would be now only 2%. This will improve cash flow issues for small businesses. Again, a very big step forward for small businesses to have more money in their hands rather than give it in the name of TDS. So in this budget, sir, we've also decriminalized late payment of TDS. If it is made before the deadline for filing the TDS itself, the tedious statement itself. So we have announced several comprehensive review of the Income Tax Act in this budget. So at the beginning, I did say simplification of taxation, transparency, and so on. I also said our tax proposals are aimed at inducing growth, creating employment, and bringing in investments. So a few steps that we've taken are for the shipping companies so that domestic cruise industry can grow, uh, also for mining companies and giving a safe harbor provision for them so that they can come in into this country's mining sector. Corporate tax rate so that there is parity between investor, corporate, uh, foreign company or domestic, 40 to 35 percent for to attract greater foreign capital, sir. And transfer pricing arrangements are also being streamlined. So. 
in broad, as an introduction, this is what I would want to say about the direct and indirect tax proposals which have come in. Uh, I will speak a bit later about the uh, amendment that I'm, government's amendment that I'm coming up with on capital gains. But before that, I'll go to specific honorable MPs who have suggested a few things. Five topics in all have emerged. Different MPs have spoken about different things, but I've grouped it all together. Five topics. Tax burden on middle class was raised by, as I said, Honorable MPs Amar Singh Ji, Mahua Moitra, Neeraj uh, Maurya, Supriya Sule, Deepinder Singh Hudaji, Tanuj Punia, Sachidanandam, and also Abhinash Reddy Ji. I think broadly on the middle class, I did say things in the opening statement, but one narrative which keeps coming up about the corporate tax and personal income tax. I'd like to highlight just one narrative, sir. That the corporate taxes are lower than the individual taxes, not well founded. It is not based on facts. It's all right for many honorable members to say, no, 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 corporate uh, taxes far lower than individual tax. I will certainly uh, try to put forth the factual narratives on that. Corporate is a legal entity. The dividend income is also part of the corporate profits which was earlier taxed at a lesser rate in the hands of the company. In 2020, we started taxing it in the hands of the shareholders at the applicable rate. I, I request through you, sir, honorable members, to see where the point that I'm trying to make is. In 2020, we started taxing it at the hands of the shareholders at the applicable rate. This effectively meant that the richer shareholders will pay tax on dividend at 39% rate, whereas in contrast, small and middle income taxpayers will pay tax on dividends at even less than 10%, which is the effective income tax rate. So this argument, oh, you're taxing less for the corporate, you're giving it all to the big corporates, you're burdening the ordinary middle class citizen is not well founded. I would like honorable members to disabuse themselves of this uh, misunderstanding on this issue. Sir, the capital gross fixed capital formation data will be of use. In, uh, I did mention that the first opening speaker of the opposition, Sri Amar Singh Ji, who normally gets into a lot of economic detail, did not raise it. And I was looking forward to hearing from him on great detail about the details that he would pick up on economy-related issues. No. He just gave a very quick speech. I think he came with less information in his hand. I was looking forward to his suggestions, but that was not to be. So the gross fixed capital formation has actually shown a faster growth since pre-pandemic induced contradiction. The pandemic induced contraction has been overcome with greater uh, gross fixed staff capital formation. So we need to uh, get the perspective on this, sir. I, I've laid it before the honorable members. Sir, honorable member Sri Krishna Devarayalu, he was here, yes, has raised this question about faceless assessment. Complaints have been received that too many sections are being evoked and so on. So simple fact which I'd like to put before him is there is a non-intrusive uh, and transparent mechanism which is in place. The faceless assessment eliminates the uh, human interface in total. And this point which was raised by him saying, uh, before the reassessment, the assessor has to pay 20% of the amount, which means on the 80% status quo continues, there is no claim being made. That is the other side of the coin. You said 20% has to be paid. On paying it, 80% claim, no other, uh, it comes almost to a standstill, it is stayed there. So that is a benefit you get out of this payment. Huh? Yes. The, where I'm asking for 100% claim, I'm asking you to pay 20, and 80, I'm not going to do anything till such a time the appeal verdict is coming. It's a relief for you. Sir, 
Also, again, Sri Krishna Devarayalu had asked this question about Vivarche Viswas, that there are no timelines given, and uh, high appeal pendency. So I just want to highlight, we have created new uh, mechanisms in the last two years. We've appointed new joint uh, secretaries. JC appeals are sitting there to clear up. More officers are getting deputed to deal with pendencies. And dispute resolution committee was formed in 2023, which deals with these claims. And the monetary limit for filing appeal to the ITAT is proposed to be increased, as I read out just a minute ago. So uh, we are taking a very open-minded approach towards Vivatse Vishwas. And uh, it has been, uh, this is the second round I have uh, brought that in. So with that, pendency is being addressed. Sir, income tax deduction have been done away with. Hence, middle class is at a loss. So this point was raised by several members. I've read their names earlier. I just want to highlight, sir, the new tax regime which we brought in is simpler, lesser in rates. It also gives a flexibility to the taxpayer to see where he wants to put his money in the absence of exemptions which is uh, available in the old regime. The old regime has not been dissolved. It is still on. So as an alternative to the new tax regime, it still offers all the benefits of various deductions, such as interest on home loan, etc. So that is still available for people to benefit from. Individuals without business income can choose between this regime and uh, the other. And if they want to revert back also, they can revert back. So there is a choice provided. For the taxpayer, he can choose. And all right, we brought the new tax regime. People are not interested, it's not the case. I want to uh, lay on the house, on the table of the house, the numbers who have moved to the new tax regime. For the previous assessment year, sir, 23-24, till December 31st, 2023, about 3.8% of taxpayers opted for the new tax regime. And that equates to about 30.93 lakh individuals from a total of 7.98 crore individuals who filed their returns, ITR1 and ITR4. However, for the assessment year 24-25, which is what is before us, until July 31st, 2024, there was a dramatic increase in the adoption of the new regime, which Approximately 72.8% of all taxpayers choosing to come into the new taxpayer regime. This represents 5.25 crore individuals out of a total of 7.22 crore individuals who file uh, the tax returns, ITRs, in the same category. So new tax regime is actually helping people to see that they are paying less, they stand to benefit with a simple system, and it is helping them. But that doesn't mean that the people who are coming into the new tax regime do not have any savings or investments. They are happening. And uh, the middle class uh, is losing out. It's not a right argument because due to the fintech growth, there is greater awareness. And ease of uh, investment is happening because of UPI, EKYC, and very many progressive regulations. The investments in mutual funds have also increased tremendously. I will not go into the details of numbers, sir. Just to highlight, on an average, this is a very, very uh, important indicative data. On an average, 17.88 lakh new folios have been added every month in the last five years since 2019. 17.88 lakh new folios. The unique mutual fund investors are also growing. Today, compared to 2014, when they were just one crore mutual fund investors, today they are four crore mutual fund investors. Where is one and where is four, sir? Sir, the fifth topic, uh, 
because I grouped honorable members' concerns, was on the capital gains tax. It is high, and that the indexation has been removed. So I'll uh, highlight in detail the capital gains tax matters. We are also coming up with a garment amendment. Several honorable members have spoken about it. The logic of the budgetary proposal on capital gains, sir, is one, that it has to be standardized, simplify, and also treat equally all asset classes so, so that it is easy for computation, for filing, for record creeping, and also all asset class be treated equally. Now the current amendment that we are bringing is for land and building assets acquired by individuals and HUFs before 23rd July 2024. It stipulates that in the case of transfer of long-term capital asset, being land or building or both, by an individual or HUF, which is acquired before 23rd July 2024, the taxpayer can compute his taxes under the new scheme, which is 12.5% without indexation, and the old scheme, 20% with indexation, and pay such tax, which is the lower of the two. Not only we are coming up with an option, we are also saying calculate under both, and tell us whichever is the lower, you pay tax on that. So, we have given an option, sir. This ensures that no one faces additional tax burden due to this change. In fact, post the uh, presentation of the budget, the amendment now which we, with which we've come, uh, come in gives an option, gives a fair option, and gives the choice to the property holder who is going to be selling it. The current amendment actually, sir, before that, there were a number of hypothetical cases which were being raised in the public discourse and suggested that the proposed changes will actually lead to higher taxes. A lot of uh, hypothetical instances were posed before us. The current amendment, I'd like to repeat this, the current amendment ensures that even in such hypothetical cases, even in such hypothetical cases, there will be no additional tax burden as a result of the current amendment which I have brought in. No additional tax burden on anybody, whichever the hypothetical case that you may work out on. Sir, all also, yes, after the amendment, yes. We hear the public. This is a practice Honorable Prime Minister Modi has brought in in the budget-making process. Every time, yes, up sun lijiye bhai, please sun lijiye. Every time after bringing the budget. Very well. Prime Minister also represents the people. We all represent the people. Every time we, sir, very happy to know the opposition wants to own it up now. Uh, Prime Minister Modi, I have done this from 2019 myself. Every time we present a budget here, during the recess, when the standing committees are working on the proposals department-wise, I have gone round the country to various destinations. Oh yes, no owing on that. No owing on that. You cannot match it. You cannot match it. I have gone round the country with the budget, met up with professionals, taxpayers, consultants, industry, traders, taken their viewpoint, come here and brought in government amendments so that budget will be representative of the common people's aspirations. We've done that. Sir, for all the heckling, for all the heckling and hooting, I like to say, once when I came up with a lot of amendments, I didn't, I don't want to name some honorable members who are seated here. They asked me, you only presented the budget, now you want so many amendments? I said yes, because I've heard the people who want some things changed. We have the courage of conviction to change it. We brought it in. No point heckling. So, sir, 
Therefore, the current amendments ensure that even for such hypothetical cases, there will be no additional tax burden as a result of this proposal. Sir, let me now um, remind one thing, which even Honorable N.K. Prem Chandranji, who I respect for the details with which he comes on every amendment. I respect him for it. He goes through it. He very consciously picks up certain things and questions, which is a very, very strong way to put forward a case, and I'm willing to hear it all. But even Sri N.K. Prem Chandran, I'm sorry, I'm picking him up not to criticize him, but to respectfully submit to him that the capital gains proposals that we brought in, now getting amended with the approval of this House, also had rollover provisions, meaning somebody had a property, they, uh, they, they bought it at some price, later on they sell it, the capital gains that they get. If they only invest it in another property, another one property or two properties, still up to 10 crores, they stand to benefit because there's no tax on it. That rollover provision was there from day one when I submitted this budget on July 23rd. Even now it is there. It continues even now. Middle class has been in our mind even then. It is now even in our mind even now, even after bringing this indexation provision. And yes, for all those who sit and ask me this question, I'll repeat. It was no revenue consideration for which we would remove the indexation provision. We wanted to bring in simplification. We wanted to treat all assets equal, all asset class equal, and therefore we brought it in. But if people are clear that indexation is what they want, we've now given that option as well. So there is no revenue consideration or greed for more money to earn from people who have invested in their house. It is only to simplify that we brought that in. So, sir, that is one rollover benefit about which less is spoken, but it is worthy to remind the middle class about which today a lot of us are being questioned, and I'm happy to answer this question. Rollover provision exists if the capital gains amount is invested in one or a second property as well. But if, if in case, no, that's not happening. We are saying you at least invest in those bonds or items which are notified under 54EC of the Income Tax Act, and there 50 lakh rupees stock you can invest annually. Even that provision existed in July 23, 2024 budget. It exists even now, and it stands to benefit the middle class. I would like to highlight that, sir, and therefore, on the capital gains tax, discussions have been conveniently twisted and turned, but the aspect that the indexation that may be decided we brought in here, so I'm happy to say that we have yielded to the voices which have been heard, and Prime Minister Modi has done this every year from 2019 onwards, I'm doing this every budget. Sir, so the capital gains and also the government amendments I've explained. The last issue, sir, if you give me that two minutes extra, is on GST. I'm coming, sir. I'm coming. I'm permission to ask GST is on GST, sir. I want to say it completely. Anji? Yes, yes. Everyone will listen to it. But there is a little... समझ का, I mean understanding का जो issue है, उसको भी मैं सामने रखती हूँ, speaker साहब आप अनुमति दें। थोड़ा मेरा टूटा पूटा हिंदी को माफ करिए। बहुत सारे विषय GST के ऊपर सुझाव के नाते बहुत सारे मेंबर्स ने कहा। A lot of members have given us suggestions 
on GST, which certainly I will take to the council, because the ultimate decision is in the council, where states together Sir, GST Council, where two-thirds states ka representatives are one-third is all the central government has, and it is a constitutional body. So, customs duty on very many items, I mean, uh, GST, not customs, sorry, GST suggestions on very many items. Both things. So, Sujav ke naate baut saare hai, sir. Magar usme ek aad vishay ko mein thoda explain karna chaati hu. Sir, before I go to the GST, ek vishay mein customs ke upar khatam karke mein GST ko dubara jaati hu. Customs duty on chemicals for research work and laboratories has been reduced to zero. Honorable Member Supriya Sule raised it and pehle bhi mene baat ki usko. Yeh wala, yis mein unka prashna yeh ta, ki why did you have to reduce? But 150 is the BCD. All chemicals which come into this country are classified in three different chapters, chapter 28, 29, 38 of the Customs Tariff Act, and they attract different rates. Chapter 28 has 2.5, chapter 29 has 5 percent, chapter 38 has 7.5, and some are in 10 percent category. Ethyl alcohol attracts a BCD of 150 percent. That was proposed in the budget, and on that a lot of concerns have been expressed. So, I just want to highlight that chapters teen hone ke baavjood bhi ek facilitation measure ke naate chapter tariff heading jo CTH bolte hai CTH 9802 was created some time back for imports of laboratory chemicals in quantities not exceeding 500 ml or 500 grams. And uska basic duty tha 10%. Matlab, chote sample size mein koi chemical ya koi liquid jo chemical ke naate liquid ke roop mein aata hai, uske liye quickly deal karne ke liye, trade facilitation ke liye, अलग सा एक चैप्टर था छोटे छोटे सैंपल्स के लिए उसका बेसिक ड्यूटी वाज 10 परसेंट बट द सीटीएच 9802 चैप्टर का एकदम दुरुपयोग हो रहा था मतलब इट हैज बीन मिसयूज्ड टू इंपोर्ट इथाइल अल्कोहल व्हिच अदरवाइज अट्रैक्स बीसीडी ऑफ 150 परसेंट क्योंकि उसके ऊपर 150 है और उसको छोटे-छोटे सैंपल साइज में ये कट्टा इतने सारे ले आओ और उसमें छोटे सैंपल हैं इसलिए मुझे 10 परसेंट का ड्यूटी लगाओ ऐसे करके सिस्टम को गेम करते रहे कुछ मैं सभी को दोषी नहीं मानती हूँ कुछ इटाइल अल्कोहल इंपोर्टर्स टू कर्ब दिस काइंड ऑफ मिसयूज इन द बजट दिस करंट बजट 24-25 this BCD for this particular category CTH 9802 was increased to 150 percent in the tariff. So, ये छोटे सैंपल को दुरुपयोग करते हुए ये कटा ले आओ, मगर उसमें छोटे-छोटे सैंपल रखो, उसको 10 percent का एडवांटेज लो, ये मिस्यूस को करेक्ट करने के लिए 150 percent डाइक्स लगवाए। इतना लगाने के लिए अधिकार है क्या? सिर्फ टैक्सेशन ऑन टैरिफ एंड मेशर्स लाइक दैट आई जस्ट वांट टू गिव थ्री इम्पोर्टेंट पॉइंट्स व्हिच ऑल ऑफ़ अस विल नो बट आई विल पुट इट फॉर द बेनिफिट ऑफ़ द ऑनरेबल मेंबर्स कॉमर्स मिनिस्टर सीटेड हियर बाउंड रेट फॉर एनी आइटम इस डिटरमाइंड एट डब्ल्यूटीओ मगर टैरिफ रेट और सीलिंग रेट इस � 
थ्रू नोटिफिकेशन डिपार्टमेंट कस्टम्स सीबीआई से करते हैं सो हंड्रेड एंड फिफ्टी परसेंट फॉर दिस कस्टम टैरिफ एक्ट नाइनटीन सेवेंटी फाइव टैरिफ रेट विच ऑपरेट एस अलिंग इज अप्रूव बाई द पार्लियामेंट द सीलिंग रेट टू फेसिलिटेट जेन्युन रिसर्च एंड डेवलपमेंट सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट in a recent notification even as the parliament was in session we presented it in the house prescribed 10% bcd on laboratory chemicals imported for use of laboratory ye kyu abhi kar rahe hain pehle to 115 ceiling bol diya ye isliye kar rahe hain ki chote chote samples ko bhi agar aap import karna chahte hain to abhi self certification karo aur 10% tax lo ये गेमिंग कंट्रोल करने के लिए था सिस्टम हम उसके उसमें भी थोड़ा रिलैक्स करके बोलते हैं आप अपनी जिम्मेदारी लो बोलो कि ये बल्क में नहीं ले आ रहे और यू पर्पसली ब्रिंगिंग इट विद एन इंटेंशन फॉर यूजिंग इन रिसर्च एंड गिव अ सेल्फ सर्टिफिकेशन एंड टेक योर टेन परसेंट दैट इज अलिटेशन विच इज बीन डन आई होप दैट आंसर दंसर्न ऑफ ऑनरेबल मेंबर सुप्रिया सोले and again on the import of rare minerals honorable member had asked this question these minerals are not available in this country there is no substitute available for them in this country small quantities are required by so many sectors high tech electronics need them this critical uh, minerals uh, therefore the mines ministry is of the view that we need to get them uh, at a concessional or 0% rate बिकॉज इट विल हाई टेक इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स के लिए चाहिए टेलीकम्युनिकेशन नीड दम स्पेस ट्रांसपोर्ट डिफेंस एंड क्लीन एनर्जी सिस्टम इन सब को ये रेयर मिनरल्स चाहिए होते हैं इसीलिए वी हैव ब्रॉट इट डाउन दे आर स्मॉल क्वान्टिटीज विच विल कम वी आर कॉन्शियस ऑफ मॉनिटरिंग दम एज वेल सर लास्ट टू पॉइंट्स एक्साइज ड्यूटी ऑन पेट्रोल has this increased from 9 rupees before 2014 to 20 now and excise duty in diesel has increased from 3 rupees before 2014 to 15 now and therefore the demand was give relief on excise duty on petrol and diesel sir i have said this several times in this house honorable prime minister both in november 22 uh, 21 and June 22 reduced the excise duty on petrol and diesel and but i would like to highlight that in november 21 and may 22 13 rupees per liter was reduced on petrol and 16 rupees per liter uh, liter was reduced on diesel both the times put together and and while petrol and diesel prices were cut by 2 rupees per liter across the country even in march 2024 but uh, sorry nahi aa rahi aa rahi ha sir magar ye कट डाउन करने वाले प्राइम मिनिस्टर मोदी है और वो कट डाउन होने के बाद बीजेपी रूल्ड स्टेट सब कट किए मगर नो उसमें भी जनता को हित में हम काम नहीं करेंगे राजनीति करेंगे करने वाले सरकार सब आज विपक्ष में से हमें मांग रहे हैं कि रेट कट करो अरे दो बार किए जी और तीसरी बार इस मार्च ट्वेंटी में भी किए मैं पूछती हूं स्टेट जहां कट नहीं हुआ मगर चुनाव में जीत कर आने के बाद हिमाचल प्रदेश में वैट ऑन पेट्रोल एंड डीजल बढ़ाया गया तीन रुपया तीन रुपया ऑन पेट्रोल एंड टेन रुपीज ऑन डीजल आई वॉन्ट टू आस्क दैट वॉज जनवरी ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री वॉट स्टॉप द कांग्रेस पार्टी फ्रॉम गिविंग रिलीफ टू द पीपल इन हिमाचल प्रदेश जनता को गुमराह करके जीत करके आने के बाद बढ़ा रहे हो रेट और इधर आकर के हमसे पूछ रहे हो दूसरा मैं आती हूं अगले भी हाँ जी कर्नाटका गवर्नमेंट अगेन कांग्रेस गवर्नमेंट 
in June 2024, hike the sales tax on fuel, which made petrol and diesel costlier even there. Petrol and diesel prices went up by three rupees. Congress government hey udar, ja ke udar cut karwo. Sir, fir me aati hu Punjab ke vishay me. Punjab ke sadas sab mangte hain baut saare vishay me. 2023 जून में पंजाब गवर्नमेंट लेड बाय आम आदमी पार्टी पार्ट ऑफ द इंडिया अलायंस इंक्रीज द वैल्यू एडेड टैक्स ऑन पेट्रोल एंड डीजल बाय 10% एंड 13% रेस्पेक्टिवली इसके कारण 92 पैसा इंक्रीज हुआ पेट्रोल का दाम 88 पैसा इंक्रीज हुआ डीजल के दाम पंजाब में ये इधर आकर के हमसे पूछ रहे जो कर दिखाया काट Tamil Nadu government, sir, led by DMK, had promised in their election manifesto that they will cut prices by 5 rupees a litre and uh, 4 rupees a litre on petrol and diesel, respectively. Only 3 rupees petrol cut was made in August 2021, and no cut in diesel was made. Hey. petrol or diesel cut. Karo. So, so excise duty, petrol or diesel ke upar, lecture dene ke pehle, wo unke apne apne rajo mein kar dikana chahiye. Sir, member Tanuj Punia, member Tanuj Punia ji, prashna poche, synthetic menthol from China, and natural menthol made in India are both attracting 12% of GST. Ye sahi nahi hai. So, unke liye mein jawab jena chati hun, sir. So, ek hi HS code tha. I don't know if Honorable Member Tanuj Punia ji is here. Haan. I wanted to respond to him. Um, in this, natural and synthetic menthol Sir, may uh, Honorable Member Punia ko jawab tena chati hu, sir. Natural or synthetic menthol classification ko ek hi HS code ke niche aata hai. Iske liye alag, uske liye alag HS code nahi hai. Uske karan, there are problems. Request was received from the state of Uttar Pradesh to increase the GST rate on synthetic menthol so that the natural menthol which is produced in this country can be treated fairly. However, because of the absence of tariff code or standards to distinguish between natural menthol and synthetic menthol, the issue had not been taken up. In this finance bill, sir, it is proposed to create a separate HS code for synthetic meaning for natural menthol and therefore after this the GST council can consider and take its decision on the matter. So that is for Honorable Member Kunia who addressed this issue. So lastly sir, several suggestions have come as regards GST. As I said I will take it up with the council but on this issue I wish to utilize this opportunity to explain what is this matter. 18, sorry, sorry, I can't hear you, what's your shame, sir, pata nahi wo kya bol rahe sir, sir, life insurance, Honorable members and honorable speaker, sir, life insurance or medical insurance ke upar, GST 18% ko remove karo. Haan. Main ye vishay mein bahut prashnu mein utana chaati hu, sir. Sir, 
It's amazing. I'm sorry to use this word. It is thoroughly amazing me. I will come to detail. But, एक चिट्टी लिख लिखे ऑनरेबल मंत्री जी मुझे चिट्टी मंत्रीगण लिखते हैं मगर क्योंकि वो चिट्टी किसी और के द्वारा पब्लिक में आया खुलासा हुआ उसके ऊपर चर्चा हो देर इज अ लॉट ऑफ डिफरेंस ऑफ ओपिनियन इन द गवर्नमेंट और पकड़ लो उसको मैं भी बोलता हूं मेडिकल इंश्योरेंस के ऊपर जीएसटी कम करो क्योंकि उन्हें उनका चिट्ठी मिल गई और उसके सॉरी हाँ ठीक है ठीक है जो भी हो फिर उसके बाद 200 हंड्रेड के साथ जीएसटी निकालो इसके ऊपर प्रदर्शन पार्लियामेंट में ठीक है सर सभी पार्टियों आ रहे हैं उसमें हम भी ध्यान से सुनते हैं सर मगर दो विषय अगर किसी को लग रहा है वो अलग बात है सर सर मेडिकल इंश्योरेंस के ऊपर मेडिकल इंश्योरेंस के ऊपर सर मेडिकल इंश्योरेंस के ऊपर जीएसटी आने से पहले से टैक्स है सर प्लीज ध्यान से सुनिए मेडिकल इंश्योरेंस के ऊपर जीएसटी आने से पहले से हर स्टेट में प्री जीएसटी टैक्स लगता था ये नया विषय आज नहीं आया है और जीएसटी पैदा होने के बाद नहीं आया हर स्टेट में था पहले आज आकर इधर प्रदर्शनी करने वाले हर एक से मैं पूछ रही हूं आपके स्टेट में पहले बात की है क्या उसको हटाओ नहीं किए हर स्टेट में था जीएसटी आने के बाद हर जीएसटी से पहले जो कानून था स्टेट में वो सब जीएसटी में भी आ गए अभी वो जीएसटी इज वेरी एक्सोर्टिव इट इज वेरी वेरी एक्सप्लोइटेटिव इसमें अभी आया नहीं जीएसटी से पहले भी आपके अपने अपने राज्य में मेडिकल इंश्योरेंस के ऊपर टैक्स था वो पहले मानना चाहिए और दूसरा अपने अपने वित्त मंत्री जी जो बैठते हैं जीएसटी काउंसिल में उनको चिट्ठी लिखा नहीं लिखा मगर इधर प्रदर्शन करो क्यों जीएसटी में टू थर्ड भाग लेने वाले स्टेट से अपने अपने वित्त मंत्री को लेटर लिखे हैं क्या नहीं लिखे मगर इधर प्रदर्शनी करो मोदी जी रेट कम करो ये क्या डबल नाटक ये नाटक क्या है अपने वित्त मंत्री को कांग्रेस शासित राज्यों से वित्त मंत्री गण बैठते हैं आप शासित राज्यों से उनके वित्त मंत्री बैठते हैं कम्युनिस्ट पार्टी का वित्त मंत्री बैठते हैं जीएसटी काउंसिल में क्या टीएमसी के वित्त मंत्री बैठते हैं मगर जीएसटी काउंसिल में इस विषय को मैं यह भी बोलती हूं खुले मन से हाँ हाँ सभी वित्त मंत्री बैठे मैं बोल रही हूं सर हाँ हाँ दैट इज वाई यू आर रेफरिंग ना किसी दूसरी लेटर को उठा करके राजनीति करने वाले राजनीतिक रोटी सेकने वाले सोच लो सर जीएसटी काउंसिल इस विषय को उनके थर्टी फर्स्ट मीटिंग में उठाए डिस्कशन हुआ फिर थर्टी सेवेंथ मीटिंग में आए आते 
you. I will come back to you, Supriya ji. I will come back to you. I will come back to you. I am giving answers to every point that you have raised as is as being done for other members. Listen to what I say as a reply. I have heard everybody's point. Sir, 31st meeting may... Thank you. I have learned from you, Dada. I have learned from you, Dada. मीटिंग में डिस्कशन हुआ ये सुनिए ना ये सुनिए ना ये सुनिए बैठिए आराम से बैठिए थर्टी फर्स्ट मीटिंग में डिस्कशन हुआ थर्टी सेवेंथ मीटिंग में डिस्कशन हुआ और फोर्टी सेवेंथ मीटिंग में भी डिस्कशन हुआ सो जीएसटी काउंसिल में तीन बार इसके ऊपर चर्चा हुआ है और मैं एक अहम मुद्दा पर आ रही हूँ इसी विषय में कोई न्यूज़पेपर में मैं नाम नहीं ले रही हूँ उस पेपर का नाम नहीं ले रही हूँ मगर हाँ सर या या I'm telling you ना I'm coming to all this there's no point in distracting me sir न्यूज़पेपर एक का रिपोर्ट है मैं पेपर का नाम नहीं ले रही हूँ मगर मगर उसमें बोला गया कि सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट पॉकेटेड सेंटर हैज पॉकेटेड 24,529 करोड़ ऑन हेल्थ इंश्योरेंस प्रीमियम एकदम गलत बयान और शिकार भी उसका हेडिंग भी वही है सेंटर पॉकेटेड टोटली रॉंग सर मैं बोल रही हूं जीएसटी कलेक्शन मान लीजिए 18 फीसद कुछ आइटम के ऊपर इस विषय में 18 परसेंट हेल्थ इंश्योरेंस प्रीमियम के ऊपर 9 परसेंट गोस टू द स्टेट 9 परसेंट कम्स टू द सेंटर एंड जो 9 परसेंट हमारे पास आता है और इस विषय में 12,264 थाउजेंड इमीडिएटली ऑन कलेक्शन गोस टू द स्टेट 24,529 जो लिखा गया गलत that it has been pocketed by the center no if the collection is 24,529 12,264 crores have gone to the state immediately बाद में जो 12,264 which comes to the center उसमें भी 41 परसेंट गोस टू द स्टेट्स, सो कुल मिलाकर के अप्रॉक्सिमेटली 73 टू 74 परसेंट ऑफ दिस प्रीमियम गोस टू द स्टेट्स, मतलब एक साउ रुपिया जीएसटी आप कलेक्ट करो, 50 रुपिया स्टेट को तुरंत खाली जा चली जाता है, अन्यथा 50 रुपीस जो हमेरे पास आता है, उसमें से भी मेरे पास जो 50 परसेंट आता है 50 रुपीस उसमें भी 29 रुपीस 50 पाइस स्टेट को चली जाता मतलब 74 रुपीस और कुछ पैसा हर 100 रुपिया में 74 रुपीस स्टेट को चली जाता है इसमें मोदी सरकार को दोषी रखो और इधर प्रदर्शन करो हर एक स्टेट में हर एक उनका पार्टी जा करके उधर उनके वित्त मंत्री के सामने प्रदर्शन करना चाहिए। 74 रुपीस आपने कमाया, रहम है, आपके हार्ट में रहम है, वो वित्त मंत्री, हमारा वित्त मंत्री, राज्य के वित्त मंत्री, 74 रुपीस कमाकर बैठे हो, गलत है, जाके उधर बोलना चाहिए। सौ में 74 रुपीस उधर जाता है, ये इधर आपके प्रदर्शन कर रहे हो? जाके आपके स्टेट में पूछना आपके अपने अपने वित्त मंत्री जी से सर देखो देखो आई एम कमिंग टू आई एम कमिंग टू गोगोए ऑनरेबल मेंबर सिद्धू सर इसीलिए 
इधर मैं खड़े होकर के वन थर्ड मेंबरशिप हमारे हाथ में रख के जीएसटी काउंसिल में टू थर्ड जब राज्य मंत्रीगण बैठे हैं मैं इतना तो कम से कम करूंगी कि ये हल्ला पार्लियामेंट में हुआ माननीय सदस्यों के द्वारा उनके अपने अपने वित्त मंत्री को चिट्ठी लिखे नहीं लिखे मुझे मालूम नहीं है मैं काउंसिल में ये जरूर कहूंगा यही हुआ धन्यवाद